In the previous video, I talked about rhythm in writing, which was something I was thinking about a lot over the last year as I was writing these, what I call off-series, short stories. Something else that I was thinking about a lot as I was writing those, another topic that I was thinking about, was what I call symmetry in storytelling. Now, what do I mean by symmetry in storytelling? What do I mean by symmetry? Well, the definition that I've come up with, which is perhaps not a perfect definition, it might not encompass everything that um, one might consider symmetry or that I might consider symmetry, but the definition that I've come up with is that symmetry in storytelling is repeated events or ideas or conversations or lines of dialogue or even just lines of text in the story spaced throughout the story, normally separated by several paragraphs or several pages or internally to the story by a certain amount of time passing. Um, it's this repeated events and ideas and dialogue, essentially. Um, so a, a better term for this might be recurrence rather than symmetry. I think I've tended to use the word symmetry because, so for those of you who don't know, my degree is in physics. That's what I did at university. Um, and as such, I still have a certain amount of residual physics knowledge. And sometimes I use words from physics to describe things outside of physics. And I think that's where I've gotten the word symmetry from here. I think I've borrowed it from physics. But um, a better word might be recurrence because it's recurrence of events and ideas and almost anything, I suppose, really, um, throughout the story. In order to explain a bit more what I mean by symmetry in storytelling, I'm going to talk about some examples. Firstly, from my own short stories, from some of the off-series short stories that I've written over the last year. Um, because these stories, particularly the two that I'm going to talk about, The Magic Money Tree and The Emperor's Pink Elephant, these two short stories contain some very, very explicit examples of symmetry. So in The Magic Money Tree, the, the example that is very, very obvious, very, very explicit in The Magic Money Tree is that there is one line in the story that is repeated three times. Um, now, it's not, it's not exactly the same line each time. Um, the wording does vary, but the structure of the line and the, um, the effect of the line is the same each time. And it's that the meaning of the line is the same, um, essentially, each time. Um, this line, the first time we see this line, is fairly close to the beginning of the story. It's maybe like, I don't know, a third of the way in. Um, and the line is, except that there was. And then later on, um, actually, it's not that it's only a few paragraphs later, um, we get the line again, a slightly different wording, which is, except that it did. And then the third time we get the line is right at the end of the story, which is, when actually it is. Now, as I say, the wording is slightly different each time, but the structure is the same. So it's always, so the first part of the sentence is always some sort of counter to the previous thing that's been said. So accept that or when actually. It's, it, it's something that signifies, something that um, suggests or means that the previous thing that was said actually isn't um, true. And then it's followed by a definite statement of existence, like there was or there is or it did or it does, something like that. Um, so the structure is always the same and, and those two parts are always separated by an ellipsis and the line is always on its own. It's never part of another paragraph. So even though the lines aren't exactly the same each time, the, the meaning is, is essentially the same. The, um, the effect is the same for each one. This is an example of symmetry. It is a repeated line, a line that we see three times um, throughout the story. The other example from my own stories, which is a very explicit example of symmetry in storytelling, is in The Emperor's Pink Elephant. Um, and this is right towards the end of the story. And uh, much like, as I just did with um, that previous example, I'm not going to go into um, what the story is about too much necessarily. Um, so if you haven't read it, it doesn't matter. And if you want to go and read it, you it won't be too much of a spoiler um, to hear this. But um, in The Emperor's Pink Elephant, 
There's a very explicit example of this symmetry towards the end of the story, after the ninth man has gone into the menagerie. Um, so once the ninth man is in the menagerie, um, some more new ministers come in and they come in in pairs. And each pair that comes in has a conversation with the ninth man. Um, and the conversation that the first pair has and the second pair has, the conversations are almost exactly the same. Many parts of them are worded in exactly the same way. And the structure of the conversations is exactly the same as well. We see the same people talking, um, you know, taking in turns to say things in the same order, essentially, um, and saying the same sorts of things, giving the same sorts of effects. Um, so the conversations are almost identical between the two. In this case, um, uh, an example of a almost a broader scale of symmetry between the two stories and a, a very very explicit example you know if you were reading the stories uh, this story it would be difficult not to notice that you've seen this conversation before um, and actually throughout the Empress Pink Elephant there are many many examples of repeated lines or repeated lines where some only something um, very slight is changed there's only a very slight change between the two so this is another example of symmetry. In this case, repeated dialogue, repeated conversations. The, the, essentially, the whole conversation is the same. Um, as I've been pondering this topic of symmetry in storytelling over the last week or so, um, I've realised that there is actually um, an example, a sort of general example of symmetry in storytelling that we're all very familiar with because we see it all the time in film and television. And that's when, um, so early on in the story, the antagonist might say something to the protagonist and they, maybe you know, they say it in some very smug or evil or condescending way, this you know, very identifiable line that they say to the protagonist. And then later on in the story, at the opportune moment, the protagonist will repeat it back to the antagonist to prove a point or because it has now become ironic. This is something that we see all the time in film and television. It's a very common trope. Um, and a, an example of it, a, a, an explicit, definite example of it, is in, and I say this because I've been, I re-watched the Harry Potter films recently, um, an example of this is in the fifth Harry Potter film, where to, uh, early on in the story, um, Dolores Umbridge tells Harry that he must not tell lies and Harry has to write on the parchment in, in detention with the quill, um, I must not tell lies. And then later on in the story, at a time when Dolores Umbridge wants Harry to tell a lie, um, but Harry has no interest in helping out Umbridge, um, Harry then repeats the line back to her, says, sorry, Professor, I must not tell lies. Um, this is an example of symmetry. It is a, re a repeated line, a repeated idea in the story, separated by a certain amount of time. Um, so this is something we see a lot in, in storytelling, even um, uh, this is something we see very explicit examples of a lot. Um, so that's what symmetry is. That's what I mean by this not particularly well-chosen word, symmetry. But why is symmetry valuable? Um, why, what's the point in adding it to a story? Why bother? Um, what does it add to a story? Um, well, in simple terms, expressed simply, symmetry is satisfying. I think it's tremendously satisfying when we as readers, or in the case of films and television, we as viewers, see examples of symmetry. Um, and I think the reason for this is tremendously simple. It's that symmetry or recurrence is ultimately just a form of pattern. It's just a pattern in the story. And human beings like seeing patterns in things. Um, because when we look at something and, and we see a pattern, we get this sense that we understand it and that we can predict what's going to happen in future or that we, we, uh, we, we get the world. We know the sorts of things that are going to happen. That's why we like seeing patterns. And symmetry, really, is just patterns within a story. Um, and, and that is, I think, why it's particularly valuable to add to a story. There are many different things that can be satisfying in a story. Um, when we're talking about written stories, 
often the main thing that's thought of as being a source of satisfaction in a story is a thrilling plot or a suspense and a sense of mystery. And these are certainly tremendously important things. But there are other things that can be satisfying as well and be sources of satisfaction as well. One of those things is symmetry. And another thing, like I said in the last video, um, is rhythm. Now, as I say, there are different kinds of symmetry within stories, different scales of symmetry. And I think whether or not it's valuable to add symmetry to a story depends very much, like the case with rhythm in writing, um, depends very much on the style of the story. And I say this about almost everything. Um, so much depends on the style of story that you're writing. Um, I think symmetry, again, much like with rhythm, symmetry is something that suits shorter stories better, more so than uh, like tremendously long novels. Um, and it really suits, I think, the sort of parable-like stories. Like all, all four of these off-series short stories that I've done are sort of quite parable-like in um, their, their style. Um, and I think symmetry does suit those kind of stories a lot uh, more. So it's something that you can put into some kind of stories, but not others. I think, I mean, certainly this kind of dialogue-based symmetry, um, you know, repeated conversations or lines of dialogue, particularly repeated conversations. A repeated conversation is tremendously conspicuous. I think it sort of works fine in these um, parable-like stories where there is a kind of surreal mood to the story anyway, and there's this sense that um, things don't follow this sort of perfectly realist um, sequence of events or, or like way of working that certain as you know or certain aspects of it don't in the way that the real world does. Whereas longer stories, sort of you know epic fantasy, any kind of epic story, um, tends to lean more towards realism. Um, and if you have repeated con you know conversations in that that are almost identical, this would be tremendously conspicuous. It would be tremendously obvious as you, the reader or you, the viewer. So I think it is something that suits certain styles more than others. But it can be a tremendously valuable thing to add. It can be a tremendous source of satisfaction. So I think it is, for certain kinds of story, for certain styles of story, it is a, a tremendously valuable thing to do. Um, that's my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on symmetry in storytelling. If you are an author or you like to write stories, is this something that you try to put into your stories? Is this something you try to do? If so, are there other ways of doing this? Are there other techniques or other forms of symmetry in storytelling? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked this video um, and you want to see more videos about um, the writing process in general and my stories and my books, um, then there will be more such videos coming in future. So consider subscribing.